before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce. Um, I apologize. For some reason, you guys, these last couple of weeks, whenever I plug my microphone up, it moves my... You see that? It moves my monitor. So I'm going to try to keep my ha hand down just to keep the camera somewhat angled <laughs> with you guys. But anyway, um, this is uh, kind of an informal video. I There's just been so much that's been on my mind lately and you know if you're new to this channel typically i do deep dive so for me to come on air without a without notes i feel a little bit naked but i kind of wanted to just have like a what do you think's going on kind of conversation because at this point stuff's getting really really weird right i mean it's been it's been weird for a while but now it's getting like really weird and i know that we you know in the past in this community we've gotten excited when it looks like things are shifting but sometimes you know i heard marnie alton say this once and she's absolutely correct when we when we talk about things like trauma we always think about trauma in relationship to like maybe not so good stuff that happened to us but trauma can also be induced by good things happening anytime there's a shift in your life it can cause like a nervous system reaction and so um i don't know whether this is good or bad or or, or neither i just like what is going on and so i thought i would kind of do a video just chit chatting with you guys now this is not a live video before we get into it my sister is about to give birth to her fourth child i'm about to have a new little nephew and so if you do see me disappear for a few days um don't worry i haven't been abducted by aliens <laughs> um, that's probably why um, my sister is like any day now she's gonna have um my new little nephew and so seeing that she has three other children my my nephew my two nieces sorry about that guys i had a, a phone call come in an important phone call but you know, my sister with, with, you know, when my oldest uh, nephew was born, who was the first grandchild on this side of the family, it was all about him, you know, and then my niece was born, it was all about her. And then years later, May, the youngest baby was born. And so she got a lot of attention. And it's kind of, you know, as more and more children are born into a family, it's, <laughs> I feel so bad, because the birth of the new baby stops really being about the new baby, and it starts being about the older kids. So even though I'm so excited about holding that squishy new little little nephew of mine, um, I know that once he's born, I'm probably going to have to go like entertain my nephew and nieces, like take them to the pool, take them to camp. You know, the, my oldest nephew is 11 and then my niece is one of my nieces is 10 and the youngest one is three. So I know my sister's going to need a lot of help with the kids once the new baby is, is here. So, um, yeah. So if I disappear for a week or so, that's why don't, don't worry. Um, it's, it's all good news. We've all heard of the Mandela effect. Yeah. And, and if you are new here and you've never heard of the Mandela effect, I, I mean, I highly doubt most people at this point, this is a, a pretty big topic in most communities, a, a topic of conversation. So the Mandela effect, Basically, you know, the basic definition is people, large groups of people remembering historical events differently. And what I mean by that is like, you can have select people all over the world, people who don't know each other, 
who might re remember one historical event going one way when it actually went the other way. So it, it, it's called the Mandela effect because Nelson Mandela, there's a huge group of people that remember him actually like passing away in jail in South Africa. But obviously that's not the case because he went on to become the prime minister. I think they call him prime ministers in South Africa, the head of South Africa after he was released from jail. So that's why it's called the Mandela effect. Cause this was a huge, like I said, this didn't just affect like a small group of people in one country, like people from all over the world, like, wait a minute, but didn't that guy like pass away in jail? And then we have, of course, other, other things like little things. Like when I was growing up, there was a, a series of children's book called the Berenstein bears. And we had tons of those, but I love the Berenstein bears when I was a kid. I think they ended up making like videos, cartoon videos of the Berenstein bears. Well, all of a sudden, it turned into the Bernstein Bears. And there was this gnarly video. Somebody played, um, I think it was on Instagram. And who knows, this could have been totally CGI'd or Photoshopped, but this girl had an old copy of her uh, childhood book of the Bernstein Bears. And she walked, she was in one room and she walked through the doorway. And as she walked the doorway, the spelling of the name changed to Bernstein Bears. We also have other incidents with like um, Chick-fil-A, which is a, a, um, a fast food restaurant down here in the South where people remember it's spelled differently than the way it's spelled now. I think the same with some TV shows. There was a movie, allegedly a movie called Kazam that many people from my generation remember coming out probably in like the late 80s, early 90s about a genie. And um, apparently that movie just never existed weird story with that too and again this could all be like faked but there was a video out a few years ago where some guy around my age was like no i found the poster like i found a poster of this movie they can't tell us this movie never existed i actually found a poster of shazam this movie so it's just weird little things like that right now we did have the incident with like fruit of the loom i don't know if you guys were paying attention to that but when i was a kid fruit of the loom which for those who maybe don't know what that company is, if you're not from the United States or Europe or anywhere where they sell from the loom, it's like, it's basically like an underwear company. It's the boxer briefs would be like fruit of the loom. I mean, it's not expensive stuff. You know, they sell them everywhere. Most people have something of fruit of the loom in their house. Well, when I was a kid, the emblem of fruit of the loom had a cornucopia with fruits and vegetables coming out. And that's not the logo now. And some woman got online and was like, no, there used to be a cornucopia. There absolutely used to be a cornucopia. And even Fruit of the Loom, and you got you guys would have to look this up. I could be mistaken on some of these facts of this case. Look it up for yourself. This is just me paraphrasing what I remember. Fruit of the Loom even came out and said, no, 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 we've, we've never had a cornucopia on our logo. Never. And this girl was so insistent that she was being gaslit by Fruit of the Loom that she actually found some old Fruit of the Loom t-shirts that had a cornucopia on it to prove that at one point, this company had this logo. Do I think that Fruit of the Loom was intentionally gaslighting this woman? No, it's just a logo, it doesn't really matter. But what some people, again, some people, we're all trying to figure out as a collective society, a lot of people are trying to figure out what the hell is going on. What is this Mandela effect? Are they messing with us? Are they gaslighting us? Or is this like a timeline shift? And now it appears that it's it's actually not only is it, it's not really a timeline shift, but what's happening is the merging of two timelines, which is wild. So what do I mean by this? Well, this got me, I saw a, a little TikTok video on Instagram because I'm old, so I watched the TikTok videos on Instagram. But when I was growing up, we were taught, and I'm 41, just for reference. So when I was growing up in the 80s and the 90s, we were taught that your heart was on the left side of your body. Y'all remember that? Like your heart was on the left side of your body. Even in The Wizard of Oz, didn't the Tin Man get like pinned a heart on the left side? And when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, we put our hand over the left side of our body because that's where our heart is. Guys, now the heart is in the middle of your body. 
It's like under your sternum, which does make more sense, logically speaking. So when I was growing up, if you had like lower back pain, sometimes that was your kidneys. Because of course your kidneys are associated with your bladder because it filters through before it sends liquid to your bladder to then be relieved, removed from you to go pee basically. Um, and I, I've said this before, being an RH negative, I actually have, you have these tubes, these urinary tubes that run from your kidney to your bladder. I have two on each side, which is normal for a, an RH negative to have weird little organ stuff like that. But anyway, so your kidneys, if you think about that, they should be relatively close to your bladder. Well, now if you look at med medical textbooks, they're up by your lungs. When did the kidneys move to our lungs? So I'm watching this woman talk about this, and she basically said it this way. She goes, are you from the old earth or are you from the new earth? She said, if you remember the heart being taught on the left side of the chest and your kidneys being in your lower back, then you're coming, you're coming from the old earth into the new earth. If you've always remembered your heart being in the middle of your body and your kidneys being up by your lungs, then you've always been in the new earth. Which is wild because we know that there is going, I mean, at least according to the law of one, as we start to merge into like fourth density positive, we know, I, I know that uh, the theory from the law of one is that a lot of kids that were born um, post 2000, thereabouts are born with their four, already with their fourth density bodies. So they're not activated yet, but they're, they're already in like a fourth density DNA styled body. And the rest of us have to transition into that. And so what that means is that, from what I understand, is that most people born before 2000 are actually the older souls because they can handle going through the friction and the the rough ride, the roller coaster ride of moving into a new body, whereas the newer souls who are already 4D eligible just came in with that already. I also you're so I, I've said before I'm I'm what they consider a zenial. Um technically I'm a millennial, but I actually fall really close to the cusp of generation X. So 1980 to 1984 is typically considered to be a zenial, where you're kind of both generation X and the millennial error. And I know for millennials specifically, there was a astrological placement of Pluto and, and its its relationship to Saturn that meant that every person born in the millennial generation, so like 1980 to like 1995, we were born into a generation that was going to be experiencing nothing but friction. <laughs> Do you like metal? Do you like video games? Brawl Stars and Dragon Force are teaming up for the release. Sorry, guys, that was one of my videos that's now premiering while I'm filming this. So if you're watching the Lucrezia Borgia episode, thank you so much while I'm recording this. Um, so basically, millennials were born as warriors, our indigo children, as they call call us. We were not ever astrologically going to have a normal life. You know, I, I follow a lot of these millennial accounts and they talk about how millennials are not having midlife crisis. Like we're coming into our midlife, but we're not having midlife crises like our parents did. Like people aren't having affairs or buying Corvettes. Because our whole, you know, the thing about a midlife crisis is that it's typically an, an existential crisis itself. So it's you're getting older, you're contemplating your own mortality because you're at the middle of your, your life. But for millennials, we, we've just lived in historical events. It's been one historical event after another. And so we've been forced to face this idea of an ex existential crisis since we were, you know, since 2000, September of the year 2001. I have to be careful about how I say that on YouTube. So people are, you know, all these accounts are like millennials just are not having midlife crises like our parents did. We're not having affairs. We're not buying crazy cars or condos in bulk. I mean, I know people still cheat, but like as far as like a midlife crisis is concerned. And they were like, so what is the midlife crisis for a millennial? And it's marathon training. <laughs> all these millennials are now training to run a marathon, um, which is very fascinating because then you go back and look at the astrological placement of the millennial um, generation and 
there our whole existence is one spiritual lesson or spiritual battle. And so it makes sense that I, I, I you know, it makes sense that these Mandela effects are really affecting more or less the millennial generation. Um, also some generation Xers, especially those that are born closer to the millennial um, generation, but it's just, it's just crazy. And, and it's wild. And it's, it's, you know, I was even talking to my, my boyfriend the other day about how millennials and some generation Xers are not aging like the generations before us. You, I, I, I've said this before. I was watching this video of um, this person was filming a gym and they're saying that millennials look the same age as generation Z very similar where we're very the people in our late twenties are and the people in our thirties, early forties and late twenties are all kind of looking like the same age, meaning that the, the people in their late thirties, early forties are not looking like they're in their late thirties or early forties. And this person was at the gym filming all these people and they're like, everybody in this room looks like they're the same age. However, I can tell who the millennials are by their socks because millennials wear ankle socks, whereas generation Z wear the high socks. I thought that was funny, but I started thinking about it and it could be that us millennials, that we are like the first legit generation to really understand the value of exercise different, like, you know, generations before us understood exercise, but it was more for sports in like athleticism, but we see it as like a health choice or a spiritual pursuit. You know, maybe we're more aware of, um, food. I mean, <laughs> When we were kids, we were raised on fake food. But now as adults, maybe we take more of a, of a um, an interest in our own physical health. I don't know. I don't know why it is that millennials are not aging like the generations before. And then I started thinking about it. And I was like, is it because? Is it because we're going into the new earth? Is it because we're tr the ones that aren't, ag aren't aging are actually... colliding with new earth and we know we've talked about it before and a lot of readings and channelers say this it's in the law of one that there's a possibility that we could be living like a lot longer lives than generations before us when we transfer into the new earth so is that why our youth is extended i mean i'm again i'm 41 i have no signs whatsoever of perimenopause at all I still get my cycle like I'm a damn 22 year old, like no signs whatsoever of perimenopause. And I know I still have about 10 years anyway, but usually in your forties, from what I understand, you start to notice like little hormonal shifts and changes, but I, nothing, nothing. Maybe that's because I exercise like crazy. I don't know. Maybe that's because I have a vegetarian diet. I don't know. There could be logical explanations for why that is. My mother had a hysterectomy when she was in her early 30s, so I can't really go by what happened to my mom because, you know, she didn't have a uterus after the age of like 33. So, and I still obviously have mine. You know, I remember when I was younger, like in my early 20s, when I first moved out to LA after school, and there was this show called What Not to Wear. Uh, you, you guys might remember it. And they like, they would like, give people makeovers. And I remember the host of the show saying that anybody over the age of 35 should not wear mini skirts. Well, nowadays that's all we wear and short. I've got short shorts on right now. My legs look just as toned now as they did when I was 22. So what's going on? Like, I know it's not just me, even though I do work hard at my body. It's not just me. This is a phenomenon that's just happening. Like, what is going on? Is all of this a sign of us transferring into the new earth? I mean, we're not there yet, obviously, because the controllers are still around. But what do you guys think? It's, it's. It does your head in, right? Like, when, like, if you've ever been in a relationship where you were gaslit or lied to, you you know that feeling of like, wait, but but I know I know what happened, and you're telling me that's not how it happened. But when you're going through a Mandela effect, it, it's kind of that feeling of like, am I being lied to? Am I being gaslit? But it's not just you. It's like 
everybody in my age group probably learned the heart is on the left side of your body. How come it's in the middle now? How come it's in the middle now? When did it shift? Is it possible for me to get like x-rays I had as a kid, because I had quite a few, to see where my organs were then and then x-ray me now to see where my organs are now? I even noticed the other day, and you guys are going to think I'm totally crazy. I'm like 5'5". Five, five. I have average height for a woman. Now, my dad's family, they're, they're super tall. Like, my grandfather was 6'5". My dad's 6'4". My aunts were like, my great aunt was 6 feet. They're all super tall. The Bennetts, my, my dad's mom, the Watsons and the Bennetts, both my dad's parents were pretty tall. Tall tall family members. And I'm, I'm like 5'5". Five, five. My, my, my sister and I are kind of more my mom's family. But I was out the other day with some family members, and I had gotten even taller. Like, I, w I need to measure myself now. And I was looking at these family members, and I was thinking, did they shrink with age? Why am I so much taller than them? Like, we all have flip-flops on. It was, and, and I didn't say anything when we were out because I didn't want to, like, I don't know, I didn't want to sound crazy. But I was so confused. Now, when I first started practicing yoga like 18 years ago, I did grow about an inch, but that's normal because you're just unlocking your body and your posture is correcting. That's pretty abnormal, but it's been 18 years. I'm 41 years old. I'm confused. I'm confused. What happened? Do I need to measure myself? I have, I mean, last time I was with the doctor, I was like five, five. I need to like measure myself again because why am I so much taller now than all my other family members I was with? Weird, y'all. It's weird. And then my boyfriend and I were talking about how like crocodiles and alligators actually don't have a life expectancy. Like the joke is they say 70 years because that's the zookeeper's life expect expectancy. But these, some of these animals, like if they don't get knocked out, taken out by like an accident or a disease, we don't know how long they would live. So is the same true for us? Like back in like biblical times when we were living to like 400, 900 years, were we giants because we just kept growing because our life exp expectancy was longer? Is that what's happening? Like, let me know if, if you've noticed weird things about your own body down in the comment section below, because it seems pretty obvious when I was with my family that I was a lot taller than them. And I'm, I, I have always been like a little bit taller, like a couple, but not by that noticeable amount. What's going on? Why are we looking younger? Why are these things happening? Why did our heart move? Why did our kidneys move? What is going on? Is this us transferring into the new earth? And if this all sounds like wackadoo to you and you're like, no, our heart's always been in the middle of our body and we've always had our kidneys behind our lungs and we've always, it's always been this way. And are you from the new earth? And we're catching up to you now? I don't know, you guys. Like, Again, this was not a scripted show. I just wanted to come see what you guys thought was going on because this crap's wild. I do have to, on another note, too, I posted this thing on my, oh, good, my monitor stayed, on my Instagram account about this woman d describing how, you know, about talking about the bear and the man issue. Catherine Edwards and I had done a video on this because I thought it was really fascinating to see people's reaction to this. And I understand why women pick the bear because a bear doesn't, a bear is just live. It's just doing what it, nature tells it to do. It's not, there's no complexity of thought. There's no malicious intent. It's just doing, and, and there are things that are worse than death. There are situations that are actually worse. Do you guys know what I mean? And I po post this, posted this video on my Instagram account where this girl was talking about how when she was six years old, when her parents first explained to her, I don't know if I can say the A word on YouTube, but where you get taken from, you know, against your will, the A word. Um, and her dad told her that it was better to be unalived with dignity in a parking lot 
then be taken to the second location. And she explained all of this, which I was taught that too. Like as a little girl, don't ever let them take you to the second location. I was taught that as well. Um, I think a lot of people in our generation were taught that. And so she was kind of explaining why women were picking the bear, which was the same thing that I have been saying. It's not about the fact that you think you're going to be safe or you're not going to be unalived. It's about the fact that the bear has no intention of doing anything else to you or of keeping you alive and doing even worse things to you than being unalived, if that makes sense. I'm trying to watch my words because of YouTube. It's the all about the intention. The bear in that respect is just innocently doing what a bear does. Yeah, but humans have complex thoughts and can be nefarious. And I, I posted this video on my Instagram and I ended up blocking a bunch of men because I was appalled at some of the responses that these men were leaving. And again, I have to say, men, if you were one of those men that left a nasty comment about women, you're the reason why women pick the bear, darling. One man said, and I blocked him because I just thought like, oh my God, how rude and how out of touch this man was. He had said something along the lines of like, well, you know, not all men are bad. And basically you need to evaluate the situation on whether the man is bad or not. Are you stupid? Like that, that's, you obviously have no empathy or no point of view or can't even bring yourself to what it's, what it's like to be a woman. Oh, I know there are good men in the world. Most men are good. I am not someone that is anti-man. I love men. I'm a straight heterosexual woman. I think men are yummy. I have a great boyfriend who would never hurt anybody. Like, I understand that. But let me ask you, you dumbass, if you have a mother, which I'm sure you do, obviously, or a sister, or a wife, or a daughter... If you're in a situation where you have to make a split second decision on whether your safety is on the line or not, you're not going to have time to evaluate the situation of the man. I know this is not PC to say, but men are stronger than women physically for the most part. That's something I actually find attractive about a man is that he's bigger than me and he's stronger than me. But with that being said, as a woman, I need to be have my spidey senses up at all time. And if I'm alone on the street and I see a man that's about to pass me, I typically will cross the street to go to the other side of the street. That's not saying that I think that man has ill intention. That's just me being smart as a fucking woman. Like, how out of touch are you? Most good men... Most good man, men out there understand that. Dude, there's one morning a week, I'm not going to say which morning, that I get up at like 2 o'clock in the morning and I typically go for a run from like 3 to 5 a.m. for like two hours. I don't do it here in Atlanta. It's somewhere else where I do it. It's right before I teach. And my boyfriend gets really freaked out. He does not like the fact that I do this. He thinks it's, he gets very nervous because it's so early in the morning and there's nobody out. And he's really worried about me being, you know, hurt. And I get that. So when I go for my run, even though the world is very quiet at that time, I typically stick to busy streets where there's big street lights or around places where there's a lot of houses and this is because I need to be able to know that somebody's going to hear me scream if something were to happen. This morning, I was out there running and I was going down a neighborhood and I saw headlights of a car coming towards me. And every time that happens when I'm in an area that's not super like, you know, it's like a, a side street or something, I always will run into the driveway of whosoever house I'm, I'm at because I know how quickly it can happen that a car can come by and just snatch me up, especially if they're going slow. Now, because I do that, because I go into the driveway of a house, doesn't mean that I necessarily think that, that man or woman, I can't even see who's driving the car. It's so early in the morning. It's dark outside. They have their headlights on. That doesn't mean that I necessarily think that the person driving that car has ill intentions for me. But the point is, is I don't know. And I, if I were a woman 
driving at four o'clock in the morning and I saw another woman on the road and she went into a driveway while well, I was, I would totally get why she did that. So if the person who left that long dissertation on my Instagram about why we need to stop and evaluate the situation, God bless you if you ever have a daughter. And I don't know, you know, they say that common sense ain't so common. And I'm afraid, my friend, that you lack some very important common sense. We know, I know there are lots of good men out there. Most of the men who watch this channel are amazing men. I've gotten to know quite a few of them. They're great guys. I can safely say they would never hurt a woman. My boyfriend would never hurt a woman. My brother-in-law would never hurt a woman. But my boyfriend also understands when a woman crosses the street when, they, when he's about to pass her, he gets why. It's for her safety and he understands that and he's not offended by that. So for the men out there that think you want to put your two cents in as to why women are choosing the bear and you want to degrade women for choosing the bear, you're the reason why they choose the bear, darling. Anyway, all right, you guys, um, speaking of alternative histories and Mandela effect, to jump back, jump back to that for a second, we are again, and it comes back down to like the whole Tartaria thing too. Like I think in some weird way, both Tartaria and the narrative we've been given are legit histories. They're just different timelines. I don't know, you guys. We are going through the Borgias right now, which is my favorite family in all of history because they are so freaking scandalous. But I'm so enjoying all these conversations because human beings are complex. And sometimes we have this um, propensity to paint people either black or white, good or bad. I think we've been trained to do that over these last few years. Like, oh, everyone in Hollywood must be bad or everyone in government must be bad. But there's so much complexity within human experience. And so I'm really enjoying going through the Borgias with you guys and really discussing discussing each member of the family and there's the psychology behind them. And so I thank you guys so much for going on that ride with me with the Borgias. We've discussed Rodrigo Borgia. We have done Lucrezia Borgia. The next Borgia we're going to do is Cesare. And y'all, I'm so excited about talking about Cesare because he is definitely probably out of all the Borgias, the most scandalous. So um, I'm excited about that. And um, this Monday, there is a chance that there will not be any Monday mystery this Monday. We are going to continue looking at some of this different stigmatas because that's the big mystery. Like, what the hell is a stigmata? Um but because of my schedule this weekend, I don't know if I'm going to have a chance to film the next Stigmata. So it might not be until ne the, the Monday after this Monday that we get back to the Stigmatas. I've gotten some requests. We are going to do a uh, Pedro Pito. I think that's uh, I'm not Catholic, guys. But the most recent, he he got requested a lot. So we are, and I know who I know who you're referring to because I came across him when I was doing research for Saint Francis of Assisi. We are going to do him, and we're also going to look at some of the women. Um, there are some gnarly stories, guys, of women who've had stigmatas. And I think that it's been mostly women who've had stigmatas. But a lot of the women, they literally have also been diagnosed with like mental disorders, which I find really fascinating. So I can't wait to talk about that with you guys. Again, every case is probably going to be very different. So anyway, you guys, um, I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What the hell is going on? Is there any other weird Mandela effect that you've just discovered that you're like, where did that come from? I would love to hear it. So let me know. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, everybody.